Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And a couple more mixed media cards because that's just what I enjoy doing. <laughs> so I used some Picket Fence Studios wafer dies and one of them is a large like greenery wafer die, which love. I ended up actually making these into five by seven cards, which I don't do very often. I've been doing a few more here and there, but it's kind of nice sometimes to have more, more space, more room for activities. So I did some layering of background stamp and a stencil and crackle paste and sprays and all the things, all the things. I had loads of fun. So if you keep watching, I will show you guys how I made these cards. So I started by die cutting some Canson XL watercolor paper using the Pick Event Studios Layering Flora Happy Fern dies or die. It's just one way for die. And it die cuts this big like fern image. I love it. I love it. It's mm, it's so nice. Anyway, you could also use like Ranger watercolor paper. That would work perfect for this. I just tend to reach for my Canson because I've got a nice big stack of it so that I never hopefully run out. <laughs> So I die cut it multiple times because I was like, hmm, why not? Why not make more than one card when I've got all the supplies? So after I die cut them, I put them into my splat box. You could, of course, always do the, you know, spraying, inking, whatever you decide to do on just full sheets of watercolor paper and then die cut after. But I always like for the most part to die cut first. It, it's just habit. I don't know. And I just, I like seeing where the color is going, even though, again, you don't have full control, especially when using sprays, which for me, I am a control freak, but I really like using sprays. Like the more I use them, I just, I have fun with them and they all turn out different. All four of these die cuts look completely different, even though I used all the same things. So this was quick and easy too. That's another reason why I love the sprays. So I used, um, three different shades of Distress Spray Stain. So I used my, my go-to green combo, which is Twisted Citron and Rustic Wilderness. I don't know what it is about that combo. I just, there's something with like that bright, bright lime green and then that really deep, intense green when you use them together. It just, mm, perfection. And then I added some Peacock Feathers. And then I also added uh, Juniper Berry Mica Stain. And that one, uh, you always got to make sure to shake it up really, really well before you add it. And that one I went a little lighter with the that spray and it's going to add just pretty shimmer sparkle, which I'll show at the end with my flashlight. So after I had sprayed them, I kind of pushed them into the little paper towels and that just to kind of absorb some of the excess, dried them with my heat tool. They don't need to be dried with heat tool. You can just let them air dry. It's fine. And then set them aside to fully finish drying. And then my backgrounds were also Canson XL watercolor paper. And these panels are about four by six because by this point I was like, mm, yeah, I'm going to do five by seven cards. So I had these panels and I used the Picket Fence Field of Mushrooms background stamp. And I just had it face up on my desk. It wouldn't cover the entire background and I was fine with that. I inked it up with some Concord 9th um, pebble ink, just kind of a beigey sort of color. Didn't fully ink up the stamp and didn't fully press it. You saw me just like flip the cardstock over onto it or the watercolor paper onto it and just kind of press here and there. So I just got a very random image and, that, you know, going with that. This is where, why I like mucking around with like mixed media, things like this, because it just in some ways forces me to, to not, you know, go edge to edge with everything, make sure everything is fully covered, etc. Like just play with it. Once you kind of let go of some of the control, it's, it's, a lot of fun. <laughs> and if I can do it, anyone can do it. So then over that, I used the Picket Fence Brick and Mortar stencil, another favorite of mine, and I applied crackle paste over it. Again, randomly. I kind of applied it in all the areas where I didn't get the stamp um, background. Just again, it just gives it that extra something. And then I let it dry and it turns all crackly and fabulous, which I'm going to enhance with starting with the that same peacock feathers distress spray i just put a bit of it onto my work surface 
And then I took a paintbrush and I'm just applying water right now and just over kind of the areas where the brick and mortar um, stencil paste and everything is. And this just kind of helps for the spray stain to just kind of absorb only into those areas. And then I added a little bit more water and then just added that spray stain over top of that um, dried crackle paste background. So this is going to seep in to all those little, the little crackles, which I don't know, there's something ridiculously satisfying about that. It just enhances it and it's fun. So I just applied that and then also just splattered it. You know, some of the splatter, any of the wet areas that the splatter touches, it's just going to absorb into it but it will show up more on all the non wet areas. So I did all of that. I let it dry and then I wasn't going to do this, but then I was like, mm, it, it needs more. <laughs> so this time I put it into my spot box because I'm using black soot, um, distress spray and black soot, anything, whether it's the spray or the ink or the paint, any of it, it is very, very intense. And it just, I don't know, for me anyway, it just, it tends to go everywhere, everywhere. So I did the exact same thing. I just added some water to it and just kind of like painted it here and there just randomly over this again trying to go over like some of that brickwork so that it would seep into those little cracks because it just I love it. And then I also used it as splatter. Now this is going to dry back that the splatter won't be as intense as it looks right now when it's wet. If you want like black splatter my absolute number one go to is just black soot distress paint. That gives you perfect black splatter. Absolute favorite. It's what I always use, but I wanted this to be, I, I say it's more subtle, but like I'm adding pretty much everything but the kitchen sink to these because once I get going, it's, I just can't stop. <laughs> so I let that dry and then I adhered my now dry, um, little happy, little happy ferns, um, to both of these backgrounds. I just adhered them into place with craft hacky glue. And then I'm going to add more splatter. <laughs> I'm going to use my Gonsai Tombi Starry Colors palette and I'm using the kind of champagne gold sort of color. So I added water to it and then I got to swirl it up really, really well with my little fan brush. I purposely went with this color because it's also more subtle. It's not as intense as the other like gold shades. Plus this kind of goes with the glitter paper I used for the sentiment. So mix that up really well with my fan brush and just splattered fairly heavily onto this because again it's mixed media I got splatter and crackle and texture and shimmer and sparkle already going on you know more is more so added a whole bunch of splatter with that and same thing just let that dry and then my main sentiment or only sentiment is the uh, picket fence hello there word wafer dies so the word there, I die cut from some glitter cardstock and it was from like an Ulta new pack. So it's a little bit of a champagne shade. Just for me, something a little different because usually I just go for gold, you know, gold glitter cardstock. So I die cut it from that. And then the hello words, I or word, I die cut from black cardstock and I die cut um, a couple layers. I didn't do my standard. Usually like I'll do like three or four layers for my main sentiments. I only did two for these because I'm having to, you know, adhere each individual letter, which was still very simple because these are nice, like thick, they're, they're chunky letters, which I love. And I only did the two layers because I'm going to be adhering them on top of all that texture, the fern wafer dies, and then the other part of the sentiment gets adhered on top. And then to line this up, I was going to use my T-square ruler, but then I'm like, wait a minute. The stick and stamp mat's going to work perfectly, especially this one, because mine, these ones you can see that have, I've used for watercoloring and a million things. They're not as sticky as they are when they're brand new because I use mine until there is nothing left. And it was perfect. I used the lines on it to line up the letters. And then I actually just lined up the, the second set right on top of it. Just simple. And then I just used some um, easy C tape, washi tape will work as well to grab all of the the entire sentiment all at once flipped it over adding my liquid glue and then I can adhere this into place I need to do this more often I, I tend to avoid using like alphabet wafer dies or yeah sentiment wafer dies that all the letters are separated like this one like this I don't mind because like they're big and it's simple 
but I usually will avoid them because I, I don't like having to line them up. I was like, oh, that's extra time. <laughs> but doing it like this, it's so quick and easy. So I press them into place, let them dry, and then remove the tape, and then apply the tape to the second one, pulled it up, flipped it over, added the adhesive, flipped that right on over onto the other card front, let it dry, and then remove the tape, and it's good to go. So once I've got those um, into place, and then let them sit for a couple minutes to let the glue uh, dry. I'm going to adhere the rest of the sentiment using the same glue. This one I just have in a little precision bottle because this sentiment's a little more, a little more delicate. And then I'm just going to pop that into place right on top of the die cut word. And yeah, I decided not to add any other sentiments. I'm not going to add sentiments to the inside of the card either. I like having cards like these um, in my stash because they're just, you can use them for like anything. You know, it's always nice to have cards that just kind of open-ended, you know, that they're made. I had fun making them. And if I just, I need a card for something, you know, whether it's thank you, thinking of you, get well soon, whatever cards like this fit the bill just because you know there's sometimes where you just don't have the time or you just don't have the creative energy or whatever it's nice to have kind of what I call generic cards on hand so for my card bases um, I had some Audrey blue cardstock and I trimmed it down to 10 inches by 7 inches scored it at 5 inches so these are going to be 5 by 7 cards and then I decided since I've got a nice kind of margin around the edges of the card front, I used the brick and mortar stencil again and one of my picket fence paper pouncers and I just pounced um, Concord and Ninth's Oceanside ink over that. So I just kind of held it in place with my finger and then pounced the ink. That's another reason why I love my pouncers because it I don't have to fiddle too much. You know, I didn't have to tape the stencil down, don't have to worry about it, just slap that ink on there and it was good so once I've got that um done then I decided also to rough up the edges of my card fronts because if I'm gonna go mixed media I'm gonna pull out my little <laughs> my little Tim Holtz uh paper distressor thread cutter tool you can also use um the edge of your scissors especially with watercolor paper I've talked about this before you can technically use your fingernails I don't recommend it because you know it puts pressure on your fingernails not a good idea but with watercolor paper I do not recommend using your fingernails at all this stuff is heavyweight and even using the little paper distressor you have to put a fair bit of like force into it to, to actually rough it up so the edge of scissors will work really well as, um, too I've done that in previous videos but yeah I just roughed up the edges just a bit it just gives it that little extra bit of texture that I love and then I grabbed some just, I have these scraps of heavyweight cardstock and glued that to the back of both of these panels. This is just going to give a tiny bit of dimension, not a lot, but a little bit of dimension. Plus it also helps to um, kind of flatten out these card fronts because they were pretty warped between just everything I stuck, everything I did to them. <laughs> But mostly it was all the like watercolory bits, you know, that warped it. So adhering it like that and then adhering it to the card base flattened it out and it was good to go. And then on the inside of the card, I just added a panel of thin, thin white cardstock just to give it that little extra something that just finishing touch. And then the remaining um, die cuts that I had done at the beginning, I adhered one to the inside of each card just to finish it off. And then as always, I had bling and mustache that pretty much matched um, the glitter cardstock. So I pulled that out and just added a few of them to both of these card fronts. And once I was happy with the placement on the first one, I just copied the placement on the second one. And even though I did two card fronts, that's another reason why I love doing sort of mixed media things like this. Even though like all the elements are the same, they're both different, you know, because that's just how it works. And I love that. So once I got those adhered into place, that finished off these cards. So I'll turn on my flashlight to kind of show you guys the the shimmery, sparkly bits. Because that mica stain is just, it's subtle, but it's there. And it's just fabulous. And then we've got like the glitter cardstock for the sentiment. And then all the little crackly bits for that stencil background. And just, oh, it was fun. These were fun. So as always, 
I will have a link below the video to my blog post. In the blog post, it'll be the all the photos as well as a visual supply list, like picture links to everything I use. So you can check that out below in the video description. I will also have the supply list linked directly below as well. So you can check that out if you're interested. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping and commenting. Subscribe if you haven't, I'd love to have you. And I will see you all very soon in the next video. Bye.